You mentioned the term film language quite a bit, and it's something I wanted to talk to you about because when I was reading um, a few articles that you've done in the past, you had mentioned Cabaret as one of your favorite movies, and you pointed to the fact um, that it has such great and strong film grammar or film language. Certainly, you referenced Bob Fosse and cinematographer. Um, so what what does that term mean to you. I, I feel like that's one of those things that people say they've heard it. They don't really have much of a definition about it. And I'd love to learn more about what is your perspective? How do you describe film language and why is it important to have that? In Cabaret, what, what, the, those visual metaphors that Bobby Foss used, the, the ball coming down the stairs to depict an abortion, for instance, just, just to give you a very simple yeah, example. Yeah. We feel like, a, oh, no, we feel a bit ashamed to use visual, metaf visual metaphors. Oh, I, I know these two, two on the head we use. We use the word two on the head. Yeah. Two on the head? What, what do you mean? You know, I mean, do, we are telling a story which is different to other stories. They might be similar. They might have been, but, but now we have different actors. We have a different dynamic. We have different variation. And the metaphor now could really work. Certain composition that are very important, you know. So my, when I define film language, it's, it's, it's our grammar that we should not feel ashamed to use. If we need to use a visual metaphor, if we need to use composition, and that composition has to be like a, like, a, like Orson Welles used to do. I have these phenomenal low camera shots with, no, with the reason that he was expressing something that in his universe was very important, but he was not telling you. He was using the image for you to understand it. What we have forgotten about film language, what we start to feel in a shape, is that we are not using the, that visual language that we are not using composition and that we are not pairing there with good acting, with good staging, you know, the staging that now that now is happening. So television, in a way, is taking that from us and feeling a tiny bit more courageous. And then you see that in television, they do one very long sequence shot and then they go from one camera to another character and the character takes you to another place. Yes. Sometimes I get directors telling me, I know, Gabby, this is very, I know it's very obvious. Come, that camera taking us to that one, yeah, it's all. No, it's not obvious in the context of what we are telling. For this particular project, it works. It works very well. Mm -hmm. It's like when you we talk. And, and we are getting, we should need to recover those elements that we have in our language, which is visuals, color, composition, staging, and combine them, and use them with creativity and with power and with energy and without feeling apologetic about it. I think that makes a lot of sense. And can you point to one scene, one shot even, in Black Widow that utilizes this idea of film grammar? When we enter, for instance, Dracov's office, Draco's office, which is an incredibly spectacular place, right? Yeah. Draco's office. So the, 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 the camera was absolutely just bringing, it, bringing Scarlet, which in this moment is not Scarlet, it's Rachel, or Rachel disguised as Scarlet. Uh, yeah. Scarlet disguised as a Rachel, right? And then we come back and we, we started showing the place, the spectacular. But basically what we did is we brought the camera even further. We didn't walk with the character. We, the camera started moving unmotivated. You know, all these words that we have invented nowadays. So, oh, if the camera is not motivated <laughs> yes. to move, I don't like it. So directors come to me and say, let's always have the camera. It has to have always a motivation to move. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know, it's not, it's not like the camera should be always have that obvious reason to move. The reason in this case is to show that a spectacular place that was Draco's office. So what I did is the camera and I start pulling away from the character, the camera pulling away, pulling, away, pulling away. It doesn't have the same, it's not motivated by the camera, the, the character pushing it. Now the camera is moving completely on his own. My character, that audience member that we brought into the scene is now there. And now we go high and now we're going to show the whole office because we want to show that space with great splendor, right? But... Casually, no, what we do, we did it in such a clever way that we don't see Taskmaster standing there because yeah. we wanted to then discover and reveal Taskmaster later on in a, another very dynamic shot. 
So when the shot, for instance, turns and then Draco shows that master and we pull focus to that, that taskmaster, then we discover that the character is there. And again, yeah. a very simple foreground, background, pulling focus. And many people will say, okay, it's been, it's been done. Of course it's been done. That's what we do. That's what we speak. But the, the verb to be has been done. And yet we use it very often because if you don't use the verb to be, you cannot show life. Yes. Because life is the verb to be. It, so it's pulling, a good point. It's a good pulling, point. Pulling focus from front ground to foreground to background is the verb to be in film. It's life. It's action. <laughs> it's discovery. It's film language. Don't be ashamed of that. Use the bloody thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 